Joe Madden making his weekly visit. Cup of Joe time. Back with us once again. Joe, Brian Kenny here. How are you? Good, buddy. How you doing? We're doing well. So the Angels, your old club, deciding to go all in since the last time we spoke to you. Do you agree with the decision? Well, I, it's, whether uh, it's kind of, uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna keep Shohei, then you have to go all in. I think that's uh, uh, the camp that I'm in. I thought they had to add some veteran players if that's the the choice that we're gonna make. So regarding keeping Shohei, if you, once you decide to do that, then you have to do this. I believe. So I think uh, from their perspective, they're doing the right thing. All right. So what, what about the decision to keep Shohei? <clears throat> yeah, I mean that's 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 uh, well, he's not going to stay there. I, I'm 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 pretty much convinced he's not going to come back there next year. Why do you Is say there that? Always that up. Um, because I just think uh, unless they do win, if they win this like this, that's part of the situation right now. If they were to win right now, then he's coming back, no question. But mm. he wants to go someplace where there's a definite chance to win on a consistent basis, not just once in five or six or seven years. I think that's how he's built. They know that's how he's built. This guy's only about winning. His own personal numbers are not as important to him. So if this, all these acquisitions in this last two-month run proves to him that this team has a chance to win continually for the next several years, I think he would come back. Wow, okay. Blue Jays took two out of three from the Angels over the weekend. They almost got swept. Uh, but Toronto <clears throat> given Otani what we often call the Barry Bonds treatment, or what Joe Madden did to Bryce Harper. We'll get to that. They intentionally walked him four times in the last two days. Is that a good strategy? Would you do that? Yes, I would. would? Uh, okay. I think I, absolutely, I would. I mean, listen, when you get the lineup card from the other side before the game, the best hitter, you're always looking at who's hitting behind him. And the, the line, the statement is always made to the pitching coach, the, to the bullpen coach, and the starting pitcher that night. We do not let so-and-so beat us. And that's pretty much what it comes down to. That's the conversation before the series begins. Yeah, he's like slugging 660. Did you see the Matt Chapman thing in the dugout, though, where the, the, the third baseman from the Blue Jays is telling his manager, John Schneider, hey, he's the only guy who can hit. That's after he hit his home run. Should that be the way it works? And then they engage that strategy? Well, I saw it. And, you know, the, the uh, cameras in the dugout are tough. you got to be careful with that. That's something, to me, better <laughs> suited for a private conversation. And that's something that you do before the series begins. I mean, again, that's a... That's normally, I, it had been a unilateral decision. Now it's a decision based on what happens with the front office and down down to the dugout. But yeah, I mean, um, it's, it's bad that it had, it's tough that it had to get to that point, but I understood where Chapman was coming from. Yeah, it's, have, has that ever mm -hmm. happened to you where a player said, hey, we can't pitch this guy? And you're like, hmm, I think I'll rethink it because they kind of rethought it. No, I, I, I honestly can't tell you that happened. I mean, I've been kind of proactive in a lot of the weird things that I've done. So in a situation <laughs> like that, there's pretty much, I'm pretty much certain that before that series began, I would have said something like we ain't pitching to show it. Right, right. So, all right. So here, here's what they saw, the, the, the four intentional walks, which is nothing compared to what you did to Bryce Harper. 2016, for people who have forgotten, 19 plate appearances to a red-hot Bryce Harper. You walked him 13 times. <laughs> 13 times in 19 plate appearances. Tell me about that strategy. Was it that bad? Yeah, yeah, it um, was. Well, that, <clears throat> that, that was all based on who was hitting after, quite frankly. Uh, they had Rendon on that team, Anthony, and they also had uh, uh, Murph was on that team. Daniel was on that Zimmerman, team. Zimmerman, yeah. But they, they, they chose to hit Zimmerman behind him. If they had chosen to, to hit either Anthony behind him or um, uh, Daniel, I probably would not have done that. It's really, that's, I remember specifically thinking that uh, for four games, I think it was a four game series, they chose to keep Zimmerman there, and that's why I chose to do what I did. So it's all based on protection. You know, you give a guy, mm -hmm. I know the theory, it's just like Barry Bonds. If you walk him every time, like when he was the best hitter in the history of the game, but if you walk him every time, you are making him an even better hitter. Like the on-base being 800 or 900 is absurd. You still think it's worth, like on paper, it's not worth it? Uh, tell me why it is worth it in real life. Oh, because it, he's the guy that's going to, he's going to hurt you. you I know that's analytically, you're not supposed to walk people and put that run on base. I get, I've been told that several times and actually probably got a little bit more gun shy with it in the latter part of, of managing only because I kept hearing that. Mm -hmm. But uh, in, in a real world, man, it's it's like I was watching uh, the Yankees with Judge the other night against Baltimore. The pitcher, I can't remember his name, was command was not good. So he may have been trying to pitch around him, but he's still going to make a mistake even while he's trying to pitch around him. Bum, a home run into the bullpen in left center field. So I believe, yes, I absolutely believe that. I believe in the other part that's not even spoken about is the guy that comes up next, the pressure you're applying to him to come through in that moment, maybe that he's not used to. When you walk somebody in front of somebody, either they ride to the occasion, but my experience has been a lot of times it's not so good for that guy. 
So there's a lot of little uh, nuance going on in that particular moment. So yes, I believe that walking the better hitter and pitching to this next guy could be beneficial. I think they ruined Aaron Judge last year. Mm. Remember, he had a lousy playoff, and he was not lousy for, like, even a two-day stretch. Remember the Blue Jays and the Orioles yes. kind of took him out of his rhythm. It wasn't just intentionally walking. It was, like, first two, three pitches of every A-B. Like, no, no, you're getting nothing. And he was kind of – he had a great on base, but he was kind of a mess. That's my point. I mean, you have, when, you, when you choose to pitch around somebody, like the unintentional intentional walk, the guy pitching has to have good command. I mean, if you have a guy that's really not hitting his spots and is attempting to do that, there's going to be times when he's going to miss, and that ball is going to go far. From a judge's perspective or Shoei's perspective, they got to stay in the at-bat mentally because you're looking for that one mistake. you got to be kind of specific and not chase out of the zone. So all of this part, all this stuff comes into play in those moments. Great stuff. 13 times in 19 at-bats. Joe, it's so wrong. You well, really, I, I yeah. worked Corey Seager with the bases loaded <laughs> and one out, right? So... <laughs> Stuff happens, man. Stuff happens. <laughs> no, I know it, 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 it works all too well, I think. Joe, great stuff. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. Good to see you, my brother. Thank you, man. Appreciate right. it. Joe.